You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. And I'm Jenny. Subscribe to the channel. A few months ago, we were among the first in Australia to take a look at the new Tucson. And now we have it for a proper review, but we couldn't decide who would review it. Well, it's called the Tucson, so we thought it deserved two presenters, right? Touche. The version we have here is in the Highlander trim with the N-Line option pack and that lovely 1.6 litre turbo petrol engine. And its power is sent to all four wheels through a seven speed DCT. And it looks great and is practical. And it's made by Hyundai. Need I say more? You know how we feel about them. So why don't we just call this vehicle great, recommend buying it and call it a day? Because the Tucson is in one of the most popular and fastest growing segments in the market. There are just so many competitors on all sides in different price ranges from different manufacturers with varying levels of equipment and engines. Basically, if you're in the market for one of these, you get to cherry pick. Now the Tucson is awesome, but so are many other cars in this segment. So, Let's check it out. Let's tell you about the design. Firstly, it really stands out. Most new cars look a lot different from their previous generation and Hyundai really takes advantage of this. The new design language makes all the new Hyundais look darn sweet. I mean, just look at the difference between the i30 and the i30 sedan, the latter being a whole new car. Well, that same idea is carried over even in the SUV segment. The Tucson is unmistakably a new Hyundai with their massive grille, a cool headlights idea, chunky side design with an angular pattern and modern rear lighting section that mimics the side pattern. The rear I would describe as minimal with a modern and sharp flare with these fang-like lights. Other than that, the cool tail lights, the rear has this clearly incorporated badge and that rear wiper tucked away under the rear spoiler. Another feature familiar from other vehicles from the company. In the rear, less is more, unlike the front, which is so in your face. In total, there are three engine options. The entry level, simply called Tucson, gets only the SmartStream 2 litre naturally aspirated 4 pot paired with a 6 speed automatic. It produces 115 kilowatts of power and 192 newton metres of torque, probably higher in the rev range, being naturally aspirated. It's also two wheel drive only. The top two trim levels, called the Elite and the Highlander, which we have here, get three engine options to choose from. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll be getting a hybrid on our shores. The first one is the same as the one in the base model. They also have a diesel option in the form of a two litre four cylinder diesel paired with an eight speed automatic. It gives 137 kilowatts of power and 416 newton meters of twisting force and is all drive. That last option we have here. It's a 1.6 litre turbo petrol with direct injection and it produces 132 kilowatts of power and 265 newton meters of torque. It's also paired with a seven speed dual clutch, which I know many, including us, have strong opinions on, but we'll get to that. So I'm driving the new Tucson and I like it. Originally, I didn't get why we were seeing more dual clutches in cars that weren't performance vehicles. But more and more, we're seeing manufacturers nail the combination. And we have to credit Hyundai here. I love the continual feel of acceleration. Acceleration. Sometimes dual clutches can be seen as not the most comfortable things at slow speeds. But think about the benefits and the downsides. Dual clutch is just perfect for sports cars, unmatched in feel and results. The fastest shifting beast with minimal loss. But the Tucson is mainly a city SUV and I spent some time driving it today. And as I mentioned, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I'd rather have the eight speed torque converter from the diesel in a vehicle such as this one. What do you think of the drive, Simone? It's good. The power is sufficient and the gearbox keeps the revs in the perfect range most of the time. With this engine, you won't lack power in any conditions that the Tucson is meant to be used in. Handling is also pretty good. I mean, it's an SUV, so don't expect razor sharp steering. But it's responsive and you develop the feel for it pretty quickly. Maybe the steering wheel is a bit lighter than I'd like it, but that's great for city manoeuvring. If you're driving on bad roads, you will feel a bit of a rough feedback from the suspension, but that's a given for this segment and for our roads. What I really like is the stability and the confidence it inspires. Even at higher speeds, the new Tucson feels stable and controlled for this class of vehicle. On the inside, the new Tucson is a huge step forward. It looks far more modern, very ergonomically advanced and more spacious. It's an improvement in every respect. I have to point out this steering wheel again. When Simone first saw it, she said she really liked it. But in the meantime, there's been a bit of like negative feedback. Personally, I don't see what they're talking about. I have to say, we still love it. It just looks awesome 
feels awesome and complements the rest of the interior design. Speaking of which, the digital instrument cluster being large and configurable really adds to that futuristic feel. It's Norse. I'll lock it. I also like this elevated section on both sides of the dashboard. Simone said it reminded her of the Jaguar XJ, and that one is luxy. The infotainment screen is just awesome. It's a stacked 10.25 inch system, and it's super intuitive, simple, but really easy to use. And that's compared to quite a few I've used recently. We are happy to report that anti-glare works really well and we filmed on a particularly glary day. Moreover, its position is good and looks integrated with these controls under it, giving the feeling it is a much larger vertical screen. I do want to mention again the awesome digital dash, which thankfully did make its way to our Aussie trims. And now that I've had more time to play with it, I love it even more. The resolution is crisp and it's super bright and easy to see. I also love that it has my new fave feature for 2021, which is this blind spot camera feed. It's just so awesome. So you'll notice that the infotainment screen doesn't actually have physical buttons, but touch sensor buttons instead, including the climate controls. And I really love it. I think it's really modern and sleek and futuristic. What do you think? Well, I would say I definitely would normally prefer the climate control to be physical buttons, but the way these are positioned and they're not actually part of the touch screen, they're, you know, just here and they're in a good position. I actually really like them. I have to agree with you. Maybe the one thing I would prefer would be a volume knob. Oh, that's true. I do like a volume knob. So this layout also opens up a nice space between the screen and the central console, increasing the spaciousness and storage amenities. This section also holds charging points and a wireless charger tray for your phone. So in the central console, there's the armrest, two cup holders, mug holder as well. This is where the buttons lose me though, because for me personally, I would prefer a gear selector or the dial rather than the buttons. Yeah, see, I disagree. I really love the buttons. I think they're very minimalistic. They're in keeping with that whole modern theme. But most of all, it just seems to create this extra space by not having anything physical in the way here. I just feel like it really opens up with the front. That's true. You can steal cookies more easily. That's right. <laughs> it looks reassuring, but it doesn't eat into the interior space. This small space under the central console where you can also store some smaller items is really cool too. Of course, you get your standard bins, door pockets and a glove box. Rear seats give more than enough headroom and legroom is nothing to complain about. Two adults in the back, like Jenny and I, will have no problems whatsoever, but three is not ideal. But three kids, on the other hand, will have ample space in the back of the new Tucson. Speaking of longer trips, the seats recline, so you can actually sleep. And I mean recline. <laughs> Rear seat amenities include chargers, heated seats, door pockets, a folding armrest with cup holders and rear air vents. The boot has around 600 litres of space, as well as another storage compartment under the floor. And of course the seats fold to make room for all your extra cargo. Here's Jenny working hard as usual. Understandably, safety tech is at the latest benchmark. Just some of the features include highway driving assist, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, lane following assist, blind spot view monitor, blind spot collision warning, surround view monitor, reverse parking collision avoidance assist, remote smart parking assist, high beam assist, driver attention warning, blind spot collision avoidance assist with rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, advanced smart cruise control with stop and go, safe exit warning. Whoa, it's a lot of assistance going on there. The new Tucson is a huge step up from the previous generation and that one was already good. It looks better than any before, packs loads of tech, that amazing futuristic interior and more space than before. What I'm missing are some hybrid options. Many other markets get mild hybrid or plug-in hybrid powertrains, but for now, we only get the three mentioned internal combustion engine options. If we're wondering why, perhaps Hyundai decided to bypass hybrid and go straight to focusing on EV. That's a good point, Jenny, and I'm hoping we'll get some electrified options at a later date. But can it compete with the bulk of other offers in the same segment? With such a competitive segment and its huge popularity, any new model should raise the bar. With Hyundai, Genesis and Kia pushing hard in the past few years, we had no doubt the new Tucson would be good. But after our testing, it's even better than we hoped it would be. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. We hope you've enjoyed our two-person review of the Tucson. So what do you think of the new Tucson? Let us know in the comments below.